And on the word that we're going with tonight, we also have our YouTube channel, whereas we are live. Thank you, YouTube, for coming on. And we're staying in the area of prophecy. One of the things about prophecies, as we can recognize in the recent months, that people had been prophesying about the president becoming, staying president, that he would be reelected. And because it didn't work out that way, because so many prophets said that they heard from God, some of them have gone to repent because they say they missed it. But there's others that says, no, I'm not going to repent because I heard from God. Now, I respect that approach. I respect that stand. But when we come to that stand, we must come to a place of revelation, come to a place of understanding, even for ourselves, because the area of prophecy is so important. You're bringing in the atmosphere of heaven to people. You're bringing in the word of heaven to people. You're bringing in a word that is so pure and so powerful and so holy that word of prophecy produces healing, it produces joy, it produces happiness, it sets us up for our journey, it gives us confidence for the season that we're in. And obvious what is going on, the enemy is attacking the mouths of the prophets. That's what you got here. And so what you also have is people who are believers that are not wanting to be bothered with the prophets. There are those who are not believers that don't want to be bothered with the prophets because they missed it. Now, what are they doing? They're going to their Ouija boards. They're going to other people, the tarot card readers. They're going to seances and all of those things because that's what they're familiar with. And what the enemy is attempting to do is to make us look lower than the ones that's in the world. And what we have to do is come to the revelation of standing and what the enemy is doing, he's perverting those who are in the body of Christ with the spirit of fear. And Proverbs 3 and 25 says, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the destructions of the wicked when it comes. That's what the enemy is attempting to do is to bring destruction. And the word tells us to not be afraid. When we're not afraid, when destruction comes, when we're not afraid, destruction comes to people's bodies and we have authority through the process of healing. We have authority with the word of God. We have authority through signs, wonders, and miracles. That right there gives us confidence through the destructions because our eyes is on him. When we come to that place of taking that Psalms 91 and making it a reality of our life, knowing that we are protected regardless to where we go, but don't stop there. Know that the world is protected for those that have an ear to hear the word coming from your mouth. Now we're shifting because the apostle Paul says that you are to have that desire to prophesy. So in that area of desiring to prophesy, don't let the enemy or don't let people who are not of the body of Christ or those who are not rooted in the word of God get you off of who you are in speaking that prophetic word. That prophetic word is we need to speak into the lives of our children. That prophetic word, we need to speak into the lives of those that are down. Sometimes you may have to speak a prophetic word to yourself. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself. When you encourage yourself, guess what you're doing? You're prophesying. There, there was a time once where I had prophesied and I, I tell you, I just knew I prophesied out of my head and it wasn't from the word of God. I just went off and I repented for my actions. But I'm going to tell you what was interesting. The words that I spoke, even though I thought I was off the mark, those words came to pass to the penny of how I spoke it. Our God is merciful and he's merciful to the prophets, but he wants us to be humble. He wants us to go through meekness because that's your inheritance right there. And as we're doing that, we're learning a place of our reward. See, when he says you're going to inherit the earth, and, and guess what? That's going to be through prophecy and being meek. But also you're going to inherit the challenges that come with that. What are the challenges? The challenges that you're inheriting of the earth. One of your challenges is going to be the president, Donald Trump. Another one of the things that you're going to inherit is the sins that are coming in from the other aisle. 
See, all those things are coming in. And what the Lord is saying, I'm pulling you up from above that because if you're not from above that and you're coming under their allegiance, you have no authority in this hour to bring the blessing. See, that's a good place to say, I got the blessing. See, when we have the blessing right now is because we are recognizing, one, we have a word, and that word that we have is a word of prophecy. That word of prophecy is a word that's downloaded to us from heaven, and as that word is given to us, we release it, and all of a sudden, you start to get confidence and boldness that when you speak, the atmosphere is going to produce what you said. Angels are going to move on your behalf. You're going to learn that. When you speak into the lives of those that need a healing, you're going to see that they're healed. You're going to be at a point when you're moving in this perfect level of prophecy that when you speak into the lives of others, whether they have faith of, or not, it's not about that. It's about your faith. When you speak, the word is coming forth because your father is honoring you. Now, that's a boldness. I like to say it like this when I meet people up. When I come and I'm praying for someone and they're going through, I don't ask them about their faith. A lot of times the Lord will do the healing for them in their body, strangers that I'm meeting, and then they'll tell me after the fact that they had faith, but I'll say, listen, I didn't ask you about your faith, but guess what? The Lord healed you anyway. Faith wasn't a requirement in this area for you to receive your blessing. Now, faith was a requirement for me being a man of God. Faith is a requirement for you all being men and women of God. Yes, it's a requirement. But for those that are in the world, it's not about their faith. That's why it is so important that you lead in this season. It's so important that you lead through the understanding of prophecy, looking at the situation, asking the Lord, what shall I say in this area? What is your word that I have for them? Now, here's another thing. When the Lord wants you to move in prophecy, he is so smooth that he will bring you to a place. He'll say, okay, the word that I gave you yesterday that came to pass, I want you to say that same identical word today. And when tomorrow comes, I want you to say that same identical word. One time my wife challenged me on that. She says, how was that prophecy? But you're saying the same thing over and over. And the question is this, how is it not prophecy if it's coming to pass? <laughs> All right. Now, why was that? Why is this so important? Because the Lord was teaching me and teaching my wife that when he gives you a word, regardless to how crazy it may sound, regardless to even though you may think it's not prophecy, the point is this, stay with the word and stay what, with what God said. And so that's what one of the prophets said, who said that they had it wrong, but they're going to stay with the word because they know what God said. Now, how can you know that God said it? My answer to that is when you're and when you have a relationship and you have a track record and you're moving in testimonies and you're seeing that the signs and wonders are following you, when the Lord tells you to do something, you do it. Now, if it doesn't come to pass, yes, we're going to have to interview. We're going to have to find out, Lord, what happened here? How did I miss it? What's going on? And then we'll be able to get a better understanding because there's going to be a season in going forward and being greater where we're going to have to recognize. Because one of the things when it comes to prophecy, too, there's prophecy with stipulations. That's one of the things that I make sure of. When I come and I'm bringing a prophetic word, I will a lot of times bring a stipulation and say, listen, this word will come to pass. But here's the rule. You must do this, this, this and this for it to come to pass. You have to change this, this, this and this for it to truly come to pass. Now, some people may say, well, I don't know if I want to take that chance. That's like a person going through a fast. It's too much work. Well, I grant you that, and we'll roll with that for the brief moment. See, when even though that what we're speaking and that this is how it has to go, according to what we're saying, the Lord is so merciful, he will give that person a miracle in their body to prove to them with confidence that the prophetic word that was spoken will come to pass. We'll give them hope and confidence that it will come to pass. We'll bring them to a place of faith as well. And so in that area of recognizing this and how the enemy has came, he's came with this area of fear. He's came with this area to pervert the words that's coming out of your mouth to come out of my mouth. He's trying to bring a place to where even though you have a season where you in expectation of things are looking good, he wants to bring you to a place to where he's taking your hope. 
He's taking your desire. That's the goal of the enemy. And so what we must come to this place of learning how to overcome that, how to overwhelm that. Because in this hour, the battle, yes, it's not yours, it's the Lord, but you are all in it because you are that bride. He said, it's better that I should go because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. That's an Old Testament model. In the New Testament model, he's giving you authority to stand because he says, it's better that I go, all right? And then he says that when he comes back, he's looking for that bride. Well, that bride is that bride that has an anointing. That bride is a bride that has power, that has authority. That bride is a bride that's able to look the devil in the face and tell him to shut up. See, we can look at the works of the enemy, study the works of the enemy, and know that we can condemn the works of the enemy. So whatever the enemy is doing against us, we have the ability to bring seven times the damages at a minimal against him for the works that he's doing. See, see the enemy knows your name when you're moving in this authority. He said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? See, I want, to, I want you to put your name there and say, the enemy is calling your name out. Why? Because you have authority. You have a word that's in you that's causing havoc in a society. The enemy is attacking a people right now. He's attacking that evangelical group. He is on them like fire right now. See, a lot of the things that they've said in their doctrine is now they got to reconsider for the moment because many people that are in that evangelical line is saying, my faith is being challenged. I, they're having some trouble right now. And I want to say, even though that they're having trouble, I believe that the Lord has called somebody like you to be able to minister to that group, to be able to speak a word into their life, to be able to encourage them. Because guess what? The church doors, even though momentarily it's closed, those doors are going to open right back up. And when they open, there's going to be an accounting process that's going to be looked at. There, in other words, count your blessings. That's an accounting process. And so we're going to, the Lord is going to say, let's open the books. Let's see what you've been doing. And let's go with what the cities are that he's going to give us. Because we're in that season right now where he's ready to reward you cities. He's ready to reward you ministries. He's ready to reward you people that say that their faith isn't there. But he's saying, I'm bringing you to a place to where you can minister to them. You can lead to them. Because the challenges that the enemy is coming with them at, they don't have the authority over it. But guess what? You do. The things that's affected your family, the things that's come in the past generations, we're at a point right now where they are being broken, says the Lord. Those things of hurt that was in our past, those things of abuse that's been in our family line, that season is over. Being that it's over is because our family has been praying for it. Our family has been saying, how long, Lord? When is the breakthrough coming? I can say to you right now, every time I go outside, I'm expecting a miracle. I don't know who it's going to be for. I don't know who I'm going to pray for, but I am always prepared. The Lord gave me two people, uh, um, two couples to minister to. And so I was um, talking with them and I realized that their lifestyle was out of order because the couples were um, two ladies and two guys. And as I started speaking the word of God, this is the key now. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And when I speak the word, I speak the word from the Prince of Peace. I didn't bring them to a place of condemnation because the Lord spoke to my heart. They already know. They already know the sins that's in their life. So that's not my place right now to bring it. But my place is to bring the word, bring the power, bring the authority, and bring the healing into their lives for the challenges that they had. They were young people, but they all had issues in their bodies and they were ready for, for prayer. The ladies were aggressive and they were pulling on me. The guys realized that I was speaking of Jesus Christ and so they backed off. But the ladies were like, no, 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 I want my blessing. Now, how can they have faith in saying that they want the blessing, but yet their lifestyle is out of order? And what I'm saying to you is that I know their lifestyle was out of order, but I didn't condemn them, but I brought the word because the Lord says, I'm going to deal with them. See, one water, one plant, God brings the increase. I know what he's given me to bring and what he gave me to bring is the signs and wonders. One of them had an injury. She was a skateboard rider. She injured herself where her back was twisted and 
she still had that problem. Her back became like a, her lower back, her tailbone was like a curvature spine. It was curved and there was nothing the doctors could do about it from that injury. So it didn't heal properly. It healed with a curve. The other lady had migraines and she had two ruptured discs in her back. When I meet people like that, my first question to them is, are you currently in pain? They were yes. And so I said boldly that this did not catch my God by surprise. I didn't meet you by accident. And I want you to know that he's going to give you your miracle right now. And are you ready to receive it? So I put the pressure back on them. They said yes. Now, the reason I'm speaking this way and speaking boldness, you're coming to a place into a season right now where that boldness is in your mouth and you're going to have to speak it. That's that prophecy now. See, when you're speaking things to the center and it comes to, to together, whereas the reality is now, the breakthrough is now, they have to stop and pause and, and, and act like the man who said, the, the bailiff who said, what must I do to be saved? See, they may not say that in my presence, but they will say it because they know what they received was real. See, some people will say, look, I didn't believe any of this until I received it. I didn't believe in miracles until I received it. I didn't believe in miracles until this person who I know told me that you were walking in the gifts. I never believed it is what people say. So even though they don't believe it, what's happening is the Lord is expanding our territories. He's expanding our borders. He's given us that Jabez blessing. And in giving us that Jabez blessing, the enemy wants to contain that. He wants to shut that down. He wants to slow it down. And if he gets the opportunity to slow it down, what does that mean? That means that we have the right to press charges against them if you recognize that he did. If you recognize the Lord's giving you a word and the enemy didn't came in, and I want you to catch this, sometimes when the enemy comes, he moves, there's a problem. The atmosphere causes us to make mistakes within that area. So the enemy tried to say, nope, I didn't have nothing to do with it. They did it. I came, I've come to tell you that when you make a mistake and it's in the atmosphere of the enemy, it ain't your fault. Press charges against the enemy. Bring it to the courts of heaven. Bring it before the Lord. He's an attorney. Tell the Lord you want to file judgment and a complaint against the enemy for the works that he's done. And not only that, we're looking for recompense for what he has done. So I am prepared to receive damages. I want to say that damages are in the atmosphere right now for the sins and the things that the enemy has done against your family. You are the generation to receive that wealthy reward. See, right now, we can see that when it comes to the wealth in the land, the wealth is what we talk about, the wealth of the wicked. We talk about the monies and the finances and all. Well, right now, there's a potential that that wealth is going to collapse. That didn't catch our guy by surprise. But he's giving you wealth in your mouth. He's giving you wealth in your words. He's giving you wealth in your thoughts. The enemy is going to have to pay you some way, somehow, and he's going to pay you well. So he can get the dollar to collapse, but guess what? There's still going to be ways. There's going to be gold. There's going to be silver. There's going to be real estate. There's going to be ways where the enemy will see to it that he pays you. Now, why is that so important? Well, Jesus defeated the enemy. And when Jesus defeated him, that means we have a word over the enemy. Because when we speak the word, he must obey the word because of that defeat. When the Lord defeated him and he took the keys from him, we now can look at the enemy and we can tell him to shut up. And if he don't shut up when we have authority, catch this, because of Christ Jesus, the enemy's entire kingdom can fall. That's how amazing you are in Christ. That's how powerful you are in Christ. So when the word says in Proverbs 3 and 25, be not afraid of sudden fear. Well, that's what the enemy is doing to contaminate your blessing, to contaminate your word, to bring fear to your heart where the word comes out of your heart. See, that's where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is. They're in our heart. And so when there's a word in our heart and we're speaking, that word is a word that has authority. That enemy wants to bring 
fear to take your confidence of that authority. That's why the word says sudden fear. Well, everything that God does, which he will do it suddenly, the enemy tries to do the same thing, suddenly. But in his suddenly, there's fear. We have authority over that fear because of love. What does love do? That love evicts that spirit of fear. And that means love is very violent. What does peace does? I want you to catch that. Peace exposes that enemy. See, when we're dealing with love in this area, love and prophecy, peace and prophecy, there's a dimension that's been given to you. One is the glory realm and the other is the anointing realm. That glory realm comes when you are moving in love and that's the love of the father. When you're moving in that love of the father, the father does the work. That's why love is so valuable. And when love shows up, the enemy cannot comprehend love. That love is like you're speaking in your heavenly language and you're speaking it in love. But when the enemy hears it, it's like weapons hitting him. It's like swords hitting him. And so when we stay with the word for the things that he thought that he had victory in over us, I'm saying to you right now, it is being broken right now. And the proof of that brokenness that is happening against the enemy is that if you had a chance, a, a, a issue of a migraine in your head, it is being relieved right now. Whatever kind of pain that you may have had in your body, that pain is removing right now because the Lord is proving himself to you that you have authority over the works of the enemy. The works of the enemy is what's causing those issues in your life. The works of the enemy is what he is using to bring COVID into the lives of many. The, the area there where he brings fear, there was a lady that uh, Pastor Robert had mentioned to me about. And this lady had um, went to the hospital based on COVID. And she was so afraid. The doctor said, if you stay in this fear, you're going to die. What was the doctor saying? We need to calm you down so you can live. So the doctor's realizing through observing that the spirit of fear, the anxiety, the stress, the turmoil, the heartache is causing more problems with people. Just like people are saying that my faith has been challenged because of the elections. So guess what? The enemy has exposed fear to those people and those people are waiting on you who know that you have authority over the fear to bring life to them. Hallelujah. So the Lord tells us in his word, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, that pursue this love with eagerness and make it your goal. Yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts. See, that's important right now. If the spiritual gifts that we're cultivating, that is our currency in this hour. That is our wealth in this hour. That's what separates us from the world. The wealth that's in you for such a time as this is a word that will bring the leaders of the world to your table. See, for such a time as this, with this kind of word, it will bring the leaders such as the, the world leaders, the global leaders, because he says, I'm going to bring the enemy to sit at your table. That's why we need to cultivate those gifts. We need to cultivate them with confidence. We need to cultivate our gifts with boldness. We need to cultivate our gifts and learning what the blessing is. One of the things I've learned is that the blessing of peace or shalom is the greatest blessing of all blessings. I learned that I had that blessing that the Lord gave it to me and as I started moving in it and I started doing research, I started to cultivate the gift. I learned that that gift was the greatest gift, that gift of peace. Because peace, remember, it is the Prince of Peace. It is Shalom. The Lord said, my peace, I leave you. Y'all know the rest, my peace, I give you. And then giving that peace to us, he's given us his peace. Guess what? With authority. So now when you're dealing with peace, what about love? Well, peace exposes the enemy I've shared with you. Love evicts him. Love is the glory. When we're moving in that glory realm, that glory is like missiles. 
That glory is like bombs. See, it ain't about you. You're the ground troops. You're the anointed one. You're the one that's laying hands. You're the one that's speaking the word. You're the one that put your eyes on the problems. You're the one that's at ground level. You're the one that's in the world. But the word that is in heaven, the word that is above, that word that comes as a glory, that word is coming in as missiles, is setting the atmosphere for you to be able to move in that anointing and to defeat that spirit known as fear and to not be worried about the, the, the desolation that's scheduled to come through the wicked. Because we can see, we can pause and see the wicked that's out there. We can pause and see the wickedness in the attitudes of people. But he says, pray for your enemies. That's a special calling that we have. And as we pray for our enemies, be in expectation of results. Look, if there's no results, especially in this hour, if there's no results and the enemy wants to try to take this word out of our mouths, if there's no results, we're wasting our time in this hour. I always expect results. I've realized that the enemy tries to take that type of faith from me when I'm rolling and talking about results to get me to a point to where I start second guessing myself based on acts of what the enemy did and not what I did. See, when the enemy brings an attack and he attacks you in so many subtle ways, many people he attacked by getting them off their jobs, many he attacked in, in, in getting them to where they received the virus and so forth. Well, he tries to take your confidence right at that moment when we accept it, not realizing we're accepting these issues. What we have to do is stay with the word, stay with the prophetic word. When you tell the devil, shut up, it's a prophetic word. How is that prophetic? Because the power that's in you is so powerful. When he hears it, he shut up. Because look, when Jesus said, peace be still to the storm, that's also saying, shut up. So when you tell the enemy to shut up, that's he's going to shut up because of your authority in Christ. See, that's one of the things that I, I want us to capture and catch when it comes to this area of prophecy, authority that travels with prophecy, and it comes with a practice. We must practice it. And as we practice the word, as we practice speaking the word, and look, not just practicing prophecy that you're about to come into some money or you're going to get that lawsuit or you're going to get that contract. I'm not saying practice that. I'm saying practice when a person is actually having a issue, when they have heart disease, when they got a cataract and you're praying for them and you're expecting them to get their results. See, now for some of us, that has to be built up on. We got to develop that. That's why the word says cultivate the gift. Where I am now in speaking the word and expecting the Lord to be a blessing now, I wasn't always there. I started off whereas it will sometimes take two to three days and people will come back and say, you prayed for me and it came to pass. That became a cultivation. In that cultivation, I can say now, and I'm in expectation of now. Why? Because the word says, pursue this love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts. So when we're cultivating the spiritual gift, we're going to learn by understanding what our gifts are. We all have different gifts. And so we want to learn what our gifts are and cultivate it. If that gift is prophecy, make sure it's cultivated. If it's the desire to prophesy, make sure you cultivate it. If it's the area of faith, the gift of faith. The gift of faith work with prophecy as well. All of the gifts work with prophecy. Hallelujah, hallelujah.